know when I was saying about herding cats, I think I know there is some, where some of the cats are. So we're going to get started for those of you who are still talking. Okay, so we're going to move on. We have a very tight schedule, unfortunately, and um, you'll, some of you will be interested to know we wanted a little more time, but just with the rest of the conference, it's all pretty tight, so we'll keep moving. So I'm going to reintroduce uh, uh, Kate Ryan. Now, one of the things which has um, been very interesting is how many different groups across Australia want to join the hand hygiene program. And so we've even sort of got to a point where it's a little weird where you've got dentistry, dental practices where you would think there's not a lot of disease transmission between, um, you know, patient to patient, um, but where they really want to join the program. And of course, in some states, the dental facilities are actually part of the hospitals, so it creates sort of confusion. I think particularly New South Wales, Ian, and a few other states, WA, where the, many of the dental practices are run by the hospitals, and to exclude them from hand hygiene uh, didn't quite make sense, uh, but to include them using the current five moments tool also didn't make a lot of sense either. So a lot of work has been done by uh, Sally and Kate and um, Karen and the whole team really to come up with a set of uh, hand hygiene practices and auditing tools that make sense in dentistry and that are practical and useful. And Kate's going to talk to us about that. Thanks, Kate. So this is going to be a little update about dental. So I'd like to acknowledge the work done by Sally Havers, who has been running this program for the last couple of years uh, to get dental up and running um, for Hand Hygiene Australia. Sally's about to have baby number two any, any week now, which is very, very due. So um, she wasn't he able to be here today, but I'll be presenting on her behalf. So a little bit of background as to why we're now looking into dental is that the national safety standards apply to public dental facilities. They're mandated to follow those standards, the standard three in hand hygiene. Um, the National Hand Hygiene Initiative initially focused on acute hospitals as our main core business. Um, but there are a lot of questions regarding how the National Hand Hygiene Initiative should be implemented in the dental setting. And we do know that there's a number of dental facilities who are currently auditing and currently using the Hand Hygiene Australia program within their dental facilities. So there's a clear need for resources for implementation of the national initiative into the dental setting. So from a resource development perspective, Hand Hygiene Australia convened a dental oral health working group um, of special interest put out through the jurisdictional coordinators and through our e-bulletin that we send out regularly. And part of that membership for the dental working group um, were some dental health experts. So it wasn't just hand hygiene people in hospitals, we actually had some dental health experts um, part of the working party. So the outputs that the um, working party were to make was an implementation guide for hand hygiene in dental settings, an educational presentation for the five moments, um, which will lead on to an e-learning e module in the future, and some support for auditing, so guidance as to how to audit and when to audit, um, and some changes to our database for HICAP. So I'd like to say a big thank you to all of those who were involved in the Dental Working Party. So thank you very much for your um, perseverance in trying to get this up and running. It has taken a bit of time. So for, for the resources, um, they were drafted and, and the revision, first draft was completed in um, 2014, um, very early in 2014 with uh, two rounds of revision. And then we have finally got um, endorsement and approval for the guidelines that we've put forward from the Australian Dental Association Infection Control Mini Committee in May um, this year and the National Advisory Committee in September this year. Um, and the documents have been released on the website, on our Hand Hygiene Australia website in September. With data collection and auditing codes being released um, this month, um, ready for use for Audit 1 2016. So for the National Hand Hygiene Initiative, the five moments for hand hygiene multimodal program has been designed for all healthcare facilities, whether it's dental, acute care, aged care, all of the multimodal program tools are applicable to anyone, anywhere for healthcare. So for dental, for the guide for implementation, product placement, staff education, program promotion and auditing in the sense of looking at product availability and placement, online learning package completion, hand hygiene technique audits and staff knowledge surveys, all of those are appropriate for dental facilities and should be done in dental facilities. Careful consideration should be given though as to whether hand hygiene compliance auditing in dental is appropriate. 
Now, the national safety standards um, clearly identify that it may not be appropriate for hand hygiene compliance or lifting in some settings, especially in the smaller dental facilities. So, in our guideline, it does say if sites deem it appropriate via an appropriate risk assessment of their facility that hand hygiene compliance auditing should be done, then the, um, we've put some targets together for those facilities who have deemed that it is appropriate. So we've put together a target number of moments for, for dental facilities to, to get to. Um, so for solo practices, we're not encouraging hand hygiene compliance auditing to be done because essentially it's one person watching one other person complete their work, which is a not a, a valuable use of time. Um, but certainly for smaller facilities with smaller numbers of dental chairs, medium and large facilities, especially dental hospitals, um, if they choose that hand hygiene compliance auditing is appropriate, then we've set some a guideline for how much to collect. There's then a five moments presentation put together for the dental setting. And the difference between the five moments talk for dental and the normal five moments talks that we give at all our workshops and are available on our website is mainly the terminology. So for dental settings, the terminology is very different. So we've um, renamed the zones for dental settings. So the contaminated zone is otherwise known as the patient zone in all other presentations. So that contaminated zone, um, all items and surfaces within the contaminated zone must be decontaminated, cleaned, sterilised or disposed of between patients. The clean zone is the healthcare zone. So although the clean zone should not be contaminated during treatment, um, the clean zone will, be, will contain organisms that are foreign to that patient. So oral health dental staff should not move between the clean zone and touching the patient without performing hand hygiene. Then without, throughout the five moments presentation of dental, there has been specific dental examples given. So we've essentially refreshed and rehashed our, our five moments talk and given it a dental flavour. Then there's the changes for HICAP, our, our hand hygiene compliance database. These changes come into effect as of the 1st of November. For, so for those of you who are auditing dental currently, as of now, there are new um, things to be looking out for in HICAP. So we've created a new organisational type, uh, which is probably more from a hand hygiene Australia perspective, um, of classing each facility in there if they are dental facilities, we can classify them as dental facilities so that we can separate out the dental facilities from the acute setting um, and, and then stratify them on our website when we're reporting our results. There's peer grouping for dental that have been made up, so as you saw that list before, um, small, medium and large facilities, peer groups, so that when you are running your reports for dental, you'll be able to peer group against large facilities. and, and and benchmark against them. We've got a new department type within our database called dental as well. So if you are auditing for dental facilities, you need to check that you're, they are actually called a dental department within your facility. And most importantly, the new codes have come into place as of the 1st of November. So within, in, within any facility that had dental or oral health within their name or a department type of dental, these codes have been automatically added to your facility in HICAP as of now. So if you're auditing dental currently for your facilities, look out for these new codes. So DO for dentists or specialist dentists, a DT for any of the therapists or hygienists, DA for the dental assistant or dental nurse, um, and DL for the technicians and laboratory staff. So there's different codings. The other normal standard Hand Hygiene Australia Healthcare Worker codes apply as well if you have the other people within your facility. So if you have normal classified ner normal nurses as opposed to a dental nurse, then you use the standard N for nurses within the, the database. So all the other codes apply as well, but when you've just purely got dental staff at your facility, we'd like you to start using these codes so we can capture the data in these facilities. And essentially, all the, the resources for dental are now on our website under tab of resources for dental and oral health. So you can find everything you need within there. And key to that is on the education and promotional page, we now have started a section um, to encourage people in dental facilities, because we know there are a number of have been auditing and, and promoting dental, um, hand hygiene dental facilities for a long time. We've started a section for you to be able to send in some information for us and we can share it if that's what you'd like to do with anyone around the country. So um, some thanks to some people in New South Wales who have already sent some documents that we've uploaded onto the website to share with other, other facilities so you don't need to start creating your own from scratch. It's short and sweet, but that's our update on dental. Any questions? I th you, we should just add this was developed with the dental people and there was a heck of a lot of feedback backwards and forwards. Mm. Just someone who's totally phobic of dentists and I'm proud to say hadn't been to the dentist for 25 years until 
two weeks ago and I've been six times since. Uh, <laughs> this is important. Ian, do you have, want to have any comments about New South Wales? Because this is particularly, particularly relevant to some of your sites, wasn't it, I think? Yeah, we, we have some large uh, some large uh, facilities, um, many chaired um, facilities that um, are quite keen, you know, they're, they're very engaged to get into this, but uh, we have, we've had some discussions with um, some very small outlying clinics as well, where, you know, the discussion has been about is it appropriate, and as the guidelines to the standards clearly point out, that it, it's not appropriate for every you know, single chair or double chair facility. So um, there's been uh, some very good um, thought put into these um, guidelines that have been taken up by the majority. But on the other hand, um, the tiny clinics have, you know, and I'm only speaking for the few that I've dealt directly with, but they have, you know, considered what benefit it would be to um, implement auditing in these very small clinics. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Okay, we might move on. Thanks, Kate. So 